in our lakes, in midsummer, in Mille Lacs Lake and a lot of our lakes up in our area, midsummer we go on a lot of flatline trolling with uh, little shad wrap leg force fishing. And what happens is sort of interesting. When the fish are down on the bottom, that's when it's negative. When you see them all loaded on the bottom, that's bad. <laughs> Where you want to see them is when they're up, at, they're three to five feet off the bottom and they're spread out here and spread out there. When you find them all lumped up together, a lot of times when they're in the, them deep water basin, they're a lot tougher to catch because the fish aren't hooked eating. They're inactive at that point in time. When the fish are up cruising and high, that's when they're biting. And that's where you can use that higher speed presentations going around them and you'll catch them. Next question. Yes, sir. You talked about that uh, depth highlight. It looks Pardon like me? That depth highlight? <coughs> yes. Option. Is that also in Morant? No. That's it's a hummingbird funny. feature. Yeah. It's a, I know it's one of the, it's a really big selling feature that I know that Lord, whether they, they will get around that patent. I don't know if they have a patent on that particular thing, but it's a really nice feature to have. I use it for every <coughs> species of fish all the time, whether I'm fishing for bluegills, crappies, muskies, fishing on the top in midsummer for muskies on four foot rock humps. I set it at four foot of water and it just isolated the top, the very crest or the top highest spots on these humps, which is perfect for walleyes in, in wind situations on the shallow rock flats because walleyes are the same thing. They're right up on these same spots. Next question. Yes, sir. Post spawn situation. What's your favorite way to search for walleyes in a river? Post spawn situation, searching for walleyes on a river. That's a very good question. <laughs> a very good question. Post spawn, it would depend on how, how like, I mean, post spawn, it, it's sort of a, a relative question. I'd say I would be jigging. I'd be probably more get, dragging jigs, fishing slower. I, I would anyway, in, in that general thinking, I, that's what I would do. One thing that's really important to realize when we ask about that, one thing you, within these systems, particularly these really big bodies of water, not all the fish are doing the same thing at the same time. In, you'll have a large population of the fish are are done spawning or you know in a certain se lake section but then you, if you went to a different lake section those fish could be far more advanced or earlier than the fish where you're at here if you're saying it's particularly if you're in a really big body of water because the difference will obviously on a lot of the spawning on this lake it goes over from one length of time you know it could be a a month between the bottom end of the lake and the top end of the lake, or I should say the top end of the lake and the bottom end of the lake, you know, that that's how long of a window of time that those fish could be potentially spawning them between the main lake spawners and the river spawners, which are the first fish up. And then you have main lake spawners that are spawning and down on the rock or main, main lake flats that could be three or four weeks late or, you know, a month later. And that's true with all different species, the exact same thing with bass, the main lake versus the river fish. The river fish are usually the first ones in. You know what I mean? So after they're done, it's a, it's a it's an interesting question. I don't know if I quite answered answered it the way you would like it. If you would tell me a specific lure, or you know what I mean? There seems to be dispersal from the spawn location. Correct. And then when the fish spread out based on either the forage, you know how you break down. You know what what your major forage that you look at. Okay, most of the milk is shattered. Okay, keeping in the bait for two days after. I, I would say generally, if you're talking post spawn situation, you're fishing relatively sh still relatively shallow. A lot of times, in most case, cases, the fish don't turn around and bolt down into deep water, and there's a real specific reason for that because the water's warming up. And a lot of times, what you've got a lot of different types of forage are actually going in to spawn. So you actually have like this lingering effect of why those fish aren't leaving those back creek arms and stuff, and they sit in there for a pretty extended period of time. You go to the north end of uh, Dabbles, and the fish are dumping out of the river up in the, you know, what is that, Pelican? Is that Pelican? Yeah, they're dumping out of Pelican, and you've got all those big shallow flats in there, and those fish are gradually coming down those flats. So those, those big, expense, extensive food shelves up in that area are the first place those fish are going to. First development weed beds, so like in that particular situation. Next question. That's a, it's, a, it's a complex question. It's not one of those things where you can sit there and do and say that or that. Anything else? On the jigging route, just by straight from the lure, 
Uh, no, normally if you put a 10 inch uh, piece of like fluorocarbon leader in a barrel swivel, and that's to present line twist. This bait, when you're dropping it down and ripping it up, a lot of times what that bait is doing is taking it, it's actually spinning. When you rip it up, and then it spins like this. So what you want to do is that bar barrel swivel will definitely help minimize uh, line twist, and it imparting line twist in your uh, reel. Yes, sir. Any other questions?